Okay, so. I hope you are able to see this screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's just wait for another minute and then start. Till that time, of course, you can read Central Limit Theorem. Good morning, sir. Morning. Sir. Yes. Sir, variance of SN is N sigma square. So as N is tending to infinity, so the variance of SN is diverging. Oh, we will discuss it. We will discuss it. OK, sir. OK, so let's start the class. Uh, first of all, an important announcement. I said that we will have full unit two in our internal assessment syllabus, but what we decided that we are going to have unit two up to the center limit theorem, and what we'll start next will not be part of the internal assessment. Of course, it is part of the syllabus. Fine, so I will also write it down on the group so that it is clear to you that it is only up to central limit theorem. And that is what we are uh, planning to have in our tutorial sheet. Uh, I guess it should be it should have been released by this time. If not, then it should be by today itself. OK, now with this, let me just start. This is what we took in the additional class. I request all the students to attend extra class. It was never intended to just uh, give you an idea of the numericals. The it's extra since my numericals are interspersed or the applications are interspersed between the concepts. So it is important for me to show you that every time I am giving you a concept, I should also give you a, an applied problem. So it sometimes happens that in the applied, I mean the additional class, we have to start with the concept. So please do attend it in large numbers because there are certain concepts which will come up in those uh, classes. But let's just start. So central limit theorem is what we came up with. And we are into the definition only and we will try to dissect this definition. So let X1, X2, X3 to Xn be independent and identically distributed random variables such that the PDFs or the PMFs of these Xi's may or may not be known, but each having finite mean mu and finite variance sigma square. Then the sampling distribution of the sum and that of the average which we will make out of those random variables. So if it is X1, X2 to Xn, then sum is nothing but X1 plus X2 plus Xn, and average is of course sum divided by N. They will tend to Gaussian or normal as N tends to infinity. So central limit theorem is one of the most important theorems of probability, and the importance comes from the fact that even though we are not aware of the PDFs, we may not be aware of the PDFs of XIs, but we are clear that our sum and the average will surely follow normal distribution as small n or n tends to be a large number. So that is the definition or the statement of the theorem. We of course afterwards try to find out the mean and variance of both the sum and the averages. So what we got, so we tried to find out the expectation value of Sn, which turned out to be n mu, and expectation value of Xn bar, which is mu. And then we of course did variance of Sn, which turns out to be n times sigma square, and variance of Xn bar, so sigma square over n. So what did we say next? that instead of using the Sn or Xn bar, it is a common practice in the normal distribution 
to use standard normal variate, which you can always build from your mean and the standard deviation. So SN minus N mu divided by square root of N sigma square. Please see that it is coming directly from here. One you, once you know your variance and mean, of course, it is just the question of writing it at the appropriate place. And similarly, you can write down the same thing for your X N bar or every, as well. So what we get, that means that the standard normal variate which we build out of the sum or the average of those random variables, they in the in the limit of n tends to infinity follows the standard normal distribution. The other way of writing it is writing the CDF for that standard normal variate which we made. So let's just try to come up to the crux and see how this actually works in a real life. So what we are saying that x1, x2, x3, xn, these guys have some mu's and sigma square. That is all we are requiring. Information about the PDF, it is there, it is good. Not there, we don't care. But we know for sure that any X bar N, which we are going to build out of these random variable, that in the limit N tends to infinity, follow a normal distribution with the mean mu, and variance sigma square over it. How this is important, what it is about. So let's just take an example, try to first understand it. And one by one, we will try to see how it helps in our real life or experiments. OK, so first case, let's just take it. For a coin toss. Fine, and I give you a problem that I ask you to figure out the probability of head in a coin toss. So that's the question which I gave to you. And I ask you to conduct that experiment one time, exactly one time. Yeah. So what will happen in that case? What value of probability will you give to me for probability of head? Half. How will you give that to me? I have asked you to perform an experiment. What experiment are you going to perform? So tossing the coin once. Toss, tossing the coin once. I did not tell you whether it is a fair or not, but OK, let's just say it is a fair coin. So you are going to do a coin toss once. What value will come? I mean, for this random variable X, which is, let's say, the number of heads. Zero or one. So, OK, but in a single toss, so random variable, of course, will take some value, either zero or one, right? Yes, sir. right. So what will be the probability according to the definition of probability? That number of events of your choice divide by the total number of events. Half in a single trial. How will it be half? I mean, I'm just trying. I'm cu curious because if X takes the value zero, that means if the tail comes, then you have the result. It is zero over one, which is zero. If head tails the if head comes, then it is one over one, which is one. So in no way I can actually get half. Can I? Uh, we don't take the value of the X. We take the number of. So number of times it is occurring. Happen. Yeah, but it's, it's a so single toss. The number of events is two, which can happen. Sample space and no, but that what you are doing is a theory. I did not tell you a priori what the theory tells you about because you do not know whether I am giving you a bias coin or not because coin can be made biased not just by having two heads on both the sides, but it can be made biased just by changing the composition of your material the way it is loaded on one side or other. So when you are saying the sample space is head or tail, of course sample space is head or tail, but you are an experimentalist. And then as an experimentalist, what you are doing? You just toss a coin, whatever value comes, that will help you finding out the probability, isn't it? And isn't it by how the theory will be proven anyway? Every theory has to be proven some way. Yeah. So in a single toss of a coin, why the sample space is coming? I mean, it won't. I mean, what all you know about is that you have, you have, think about it again. You just want to figure out the probability of head 
by tossing a coin single time and if it is a single time the value the only value which you can give to me is either 0 or 1 and you may associate with this sir this may not be correct because there should be some uncertainty associated with this probability and that you can of course tell me that sir there even though the value which we are giving is 0 but it seems like there is a big uncertainty associated with it or one with a big uncertainty maybe 0 plus minus 1 maybe 0 plus minus half i am not going into that detail for the time being but please see that in a single toss of a coin the only value of the probability for the head or the tail you can give me 0 or 1 nothing else go back and think about it once again okay so how will you improve upon this what will you I'm ask increasing the number of times you perform the experiment okay so what will you do let's say you increase the number of coins uh, times so if you do it twice coin toss experiment twice so what will happen in that case the random variable is going to take value what 0 1 2 and how it is going to help you out so what is the probability of head how will you find out it will be Coin toss twice. So how it is going to help you out? Zero by two, one by two, or two by two. Okay, so either the probability is zero by two, you will say, or one by two, you will say, or two by two, you will say. Yeah, I mean this is what a single toss. I mean the two tosses can give you value. Of course, you will see that there is a chance that you can actually give you the correct one. but please see what is happening by doing this if i say that you are given an option of tossing a coin 1000 time now or 10000 time can you tell me in which of those so one time two time 1000 time or 10000 time your probability value will have the smallest uncertainty Can you tell me? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. And why do you say that? Sir, because it the uncertainty will now be distributed over all the uh, number of trials which we have uh, like conducted. The uncertainty will be distributed, but the actual thing what is happening is the central limit theorem. and what is that is happening is that even though each of the individual trial if you look into it let's just uh, look into the central limit theorem each of the individual trial even though it has mean value mu but the associated uncertainty is sigma square that means that each of the individual trial even if you do the expectations you will find out that the value you are going to quote as mu plus minus sigma however if you are going to take mean over a large number of such observations the same thing will be written as mu plus minus sigma over root n look at the variance which you have got in the case of x bar so larger the number of trials you are doing your error component your error component is becoming smaller by this factor of root n and hence what you are able to say that in case if you do large number of experiments and then take average of those large number of experiments the precision so let me just say the precision of the measurement becomes better this is how it is happening because it is coming directly from the central limit theorem in fact it is not just saying that the precision is becoming better it is also saying that the distribution of xn that will be normal distribution so that means let's just go back to this one if you do 10000 experiments or maybe even 1000 experiments you will find out that if you want to plot your 
x bar where x bar is nothing but the average you will find that if you are going to repeat the experiment with 10000 averages many time you have the value which will tend towards of course what we call as the population mean but the error which we are interested in which is telling you how precise your value is this value which is for mu x bar this goes to sigma over root n and sigma over root n minus if you decrease the number of n of course so for a single uh, experiment you will have the same value mu sigma minus sigma so mu plus minus sigma whereas if you increase the number of observations then the average will start giving you more and more precise result and when it is getting more and more precise it will also becoming caution this is precisely the reason why when you were doing now relating it with what you have done you might have done in your bsc did you do the simple pendulum or the bar pendulum or the cater pendulum experiment yes sir yes okay. sir good and did you repeat the experiment or did you do it once Repeated. 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 Why did you repeat the experiment and what did you achieve by repeating the experiment? So let's just think about it. So let's say you did your experiment one. You must have got the value of let's say G acceleration due to gravity and you must have got your error if you do it once. Now what happens? Why did you repeat it? What did the teacher tell you? So to go so more the close random, to G. Error is random in nature. So if you repeat it, you will get a better uh, that uh, estimation of the value and the error will reduce. How? But how? I mean, it is random in nature. OK, I am actually quoting your sentence and it is absolutely right. Errors generally are random in nature and I can just make it more precise. The statistical errors, certain errors are random in nature. It may not be true that all the errors are random in nature. For example, the least counts are not the, I mean, they are the uncertainties, but they are not random. They, that is the least count which remains fixed. But the what are the errors which are random in the experiment which you were performing? Sir, the time when we stop the stopwatch. When you start the stopwatch, when you stop the stopwatch, when you release it from a single point, that may be slightly off from left to right, whatever it will be in one. So there are errors which are surely random. Now, random errors take advantage from CLT, which is what we are calling as the central limit theorem. Random errors, what we are saying, they are described by random variables. That means that in a particular experiment, the value which you get, you may not get the identical value in the next iteration of the same experiment, even though you try to be extremely careful. These random errors are extrinsic in nature in the sense, particularly for these, this experiment, the bar pendulum, ex extrinsic in the sense that the control is that you cannot make your response more than better than certain microseconds or maybe nanoseconds if you are way too better, but actually in uh, real life, more than a second. And then what happens that if you are going to take the average of multiple readings, then of course your average value will tend towards mean as your sample size increases. But other thing which is help, 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 helping you that let's say if in each of the experiment, single trial, the error was sigma, then this average also has the error which is sigma over root n. This is what we call the standard error or the error on the mean. So your teacher asked you to repeat it because the errors are random in nature and hence you will take advantage of the central limit theorem. In fact, if you plot those observations for large enough observation, I can tell you that even for 20 observation, if you plot it, you will find that X bar for those 20 observations will ultimately follow this kind of a normal distribution. And that's the power of the central limit theorem that you are able to make it more and more precise. 
Now, one thing which I want to give you as a homework in the previous on the previous page, what I did was a simple coin toss example, which is governed by binomial distribution. Yeah, binomial distribution, which is having N and P. N is the number of, of course, uh, trials and P is the probability of success in each trial. Yeah. So you can actually do it for N is equal to one and half find out your mu and sigma which you have actually already found out then find out the same mu and sigma when i increase n to 10 and p remains half but in this time when you are doing the 10 what we will continue to look at the probability of success not just the expectation value of the random variable but the probability of success so in each of the case Try to find out the probability of the success. Keep on finding out mu and sigma and convert that to the probability of the success, whatever you will call that. And I would like to see how did you go, but I will give you an example directly from your lab and that we, I mean, those who are doing the nuclear physics experiments, they are surely doing it but others can also benefit from this example. So let's just do that example. So I have a GM counter. So this is my example two, which is more realistic in terms of what you are doing. Please uh, don't worry, I will uh, let you ask questions after I'm done with this example, but let's just start with it. So you are doing a GM counter experiment. And for a fixed period of time, let's say two minutes, you are asked to collect the number of counts and that's what you do actually I mean for, with a source let's say or uh, yeah so with the source you are asked to collect the counts in two minutes and you are pretty sure that if you keep on repeating the experiment this value does not turn out to be identical this is actually governed by Poisson distribution you know that but let's just do the experiment in the way the experiment is done yeah okay so in two minutes time you perform this experiment and you get the counts Let's say n is equal to 100. So n is nothing but. Theoretically, n is nothing but the mean of the Poisson distribution. So it actually corresponds to some random variable. How do you quote the result of the counts in that case? Because in an experiment in, render, in a nuclear physics lab, it is asked to always write, write down your result as the number plus minus error. You are not allowed to write down a number without having any error, which is the first thing which is told. So how will you write down, report this number? Plus or minus root n. So you do it n plus minus sigma n, where sigma n is nothing but root of n. And this root n you are saying, which is coming from your knowledge of the theoretical distribution. But OK, I mean, you are Quoting it, so 100 plus minus 10, is it fine? Fine? All of you who are doing this yes, experiment. Sir. Yeah, okay. What is the percentage error in this uh, reading? How do you find out the percentage error? 10 by 100 into 100. So 10 by 100 into 100, which is what? So let 10, me just try it. 10 over 100 into 100. So you have 10 percent error. I mean, it is clear just by looking at these numbers. 10 divided by 100, which is one tenth, and uh, relative error and percentage error is 10 percent. OK, now somebody else who is a little bit more diligent, he did the same experiment, but he did it twice. Fine. And by chance, I mean, of course, uh, it doesn't happen. But by chance, he got N1 is equal to 100 in his first set and N2 is equal to 100. By the way, this is what you have written is count rate in two minutes. So counts per two minutes. Yeah. Now, if this guy has got this, what will be the count rate for this person who repeated this experiment twice? And he got 100 and 100 in both of these. 
so how this person is going to repeat uh, to report the result what is n for him count rate in 2 minutes 100 uh, how did you do that average of two average of two reading so you said that n1 plus n2 over 2 which is nothing but 100 plus 100 over 2 which is nothing but 100 fine and what is the error for this guy so you say of course that the readings are independent so i do not need to worry about the correlation How did you report sigma, that? Sigma square n one plus sigma square n two. Sigma square n one plus sigma square n two. But what happens to the two, which is there in this denominator? How do uh, sigmas scale? So I should write sigma square first. Let's just write, which is nothing but the variances, right? so a uh, simple question comes if y is equal to ax what is sigma square y in terms of sigma square x where a is a fixed number a square, a times square times sigma square x a square a square uh, times sigma square x a square sigma square x so how will you write this then n1 uh, is one random variable n2 represent another random variable and 1 by 2 that's a fixed number divide by 4 divide by 4 okay so let's just write down the number what is sigma square n1 what is sigma square n1 10. n1 was 100 10 okay. but what uh, it is sigma square so i write please see that i am doing the variance Take your time. This should turn out to be. It is nothing but root n one divided square plus. Uh, let me just explicitly write down so that in case you will watch it later, you can just appreciate it. So this will what? I mean, this is nothing but hundred plus hundred divided by four. So it is nothing but two hundred divided by four, which is equal to fifty. So what will be sigma n? Five fifty. Square root fifty. What is that? Approximate number in terms of seven point something one seven. So seven. actually, uh, you can limit yourself to seven because it is number of counts. So uh, the result which you are going to quote is hundred plus minus seven in this second experiment. And what is the percentage error? Seven. Seven percent. Seven. Seven percent. So let's just do one more experiment. and this person is doing the same experiment 10 times all those are independent so the person has done this 10 times and by chance i mean of course it is not going to happen but it is just going to make my calculations simple so by chance this guy got and 10 is equal to 100 so now how this person is going to report the number of counts in 2 minutes 100 this guy is of course uh, it is just n1 plus n2 plus n10 over 10 which is nothing but 100 because i mean this is the way uh, we placed our experiment although in real life you may be getting n2 values and it's uh, slightly different from 100 but that's not the objective the objective is to look into something interesting so what will be sigma n square in this case it will be Sigma square n one plus sigma square n two plus sigma square n ten divided by hundred. Yeah, and what is the result? So each of these reading is hundred, 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 so on and so forth. Ten. So ten. this basically is uh, the way you have got is ten into hundred. Divide by hundred, which is equal to ten. So, what is sigma n then? Root ten. Root ten. Root ten is three. So now you are going to quote the result as hundred plus minus three. 
and the percentage error is 3 percentage. Let me just try to summarize what you have done. You have taken the experiment, the readings for one time for two minutes, and the result has an uncertainty of 10 percent. If you repeat the experiment twice, the uncertainty has reduced to 7 percent. Please see that the mean is not affected. If you are looking at the mean and that you are getting something which you are getting into mean, it is not getting affected at least in this particular example. But this is getting 7% and if you just go for 10 such count readings, you are getting the error which is 3% which is much better than the error which you were getting in the first one. What has happened? What has happened is that in the case of 10th one where you made a random variable which is nothing but the average of 10 random variables, your error sigma n square or the sigma n becomes sigma n over root n. What was sigma n? Sigma n was 100, 100 over this root n. That is what the error you, you have got. Oh, sigma n was 10, sorry. So this is what is happening in this case. That's the real example of how GM counter results will get more and more precise if you repeat the experiment. Here the uncertainty is intrinsic one because it is coming from the decay process or the counting statistics process. It's not coming extrinsically. You are not doing anything. It is happening at the quantum level that the decays themselves and the interaction of radiation with the GM counter, they, that itself is a random process. But since it's a random process, so you can gain from your averaging. This is the reason why your teachers are asking you to repeat the experiment and take the average of the readings instead of doing this experiment only once because you are able to improve upon the error. And why? Because your central limit theorem is coming to help you out. It is basically telling you that the X bar has an error which is called a sigma X bar, which if each of this has sigma as the error, then this is going to be improved. Now you may tell me that sir, we kept all the numbers identical and hence maybe we are getting, but it is not the reason. The reason is coming because that when you are actually doing this experiment, you are gaining from this root n which is coming in this. In fact, the next version of the next statement which comes for the central limit theorem in which we say that x1, x2, x3, xn. So next statement, please just look into it carefully. They are all independent. But may or may not be identical. Be identical. So then each having mean mu i. So that means first one may have mu 1, another one has mu 2. So now we are saying that these xi's may come from even different distributions such that they have their means different mu i and variances sigma i square. So even those can be different. Even in those cases, the Sn and Xn bar, which is nothing but the sum or the averages, which we can build out of these random variables, they tend to normal as n tends to infinity. So normal means normal or caution. Can you quickly tell me what will be the expectation value of X and bar in the case when the XI's are not identical and having this mean mu1, mu2, mu3? So look at this X and bar is still written as X1 plus X2 plus Xn divide by N. Use the rules of your expectation value. So and give me the answer for expectation value of Xn. Mu1 plus mu2 till mu n by n. So the average of mu's. 
So that means that summation of mu i divided by, by n. n. Right? And what will be variance? Sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square till sigma n square by n square. So sigma i is square by n, n is square. square. n is square, right? So what will be the standard deviation which is basically uh, written as the array? Square root summation sigma i square divide by n. Yeah. So even in the cases when your x1, x2, xn are not identical, then also the same statement holds. It is just that the expectation value in that case will be will be given by summation mu i over n and the standard deviation will be given by x n bar. So this is the next statement which just takes care of the independence of the event, which means since the events are independent, so you do not need to worry about the covariances and everything else remains same that the CLT now come to your rescue even for the cases where the random errors are not all coming from the same source. So let's say your response, for example, for the time, so for the timepiece or the watch which you are using, that has one random error. The random error where you are releasing it from one point to another, that may have another random error. There may be some movement, I mean, even though you consider it fixed, but there may be some movement which is happening around the fixed portion, another random error. So even though these guys are all different, but since they are independent of each other, so we can still utilize the central limit theorem to say that the mean, the average value will have better precision than taking a single reading because it is averaging over several random errors. And in case if you repeat the experiment many, many times, then the distribution of the mean can also be given. That is nothing but a normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. So that is how the central limit theorem helps us in figuring out or in making our uh, random errors more and more precise by repeating the experiment. Every time you do any experiment, in fact, the teacher will ask you to repeat it or in the case of the experiment where the statistics is there, teacher will ask you to repeat it together more statistics because in both the cases, you are taking care of the random errors by invoking central limit theorem. The standard error on the mean is better than the error which is there on an individual uh, trial or the experiment. So now for the time being, I would let you ask questions related with this. Sir. Yes. Sir, if in the, uh, sir, if we don't need identical distribution, if it can be solved without identical distribution, then so in the theory, in the starting part of the central limit theorem, sir, why do we mention the word identical? Okay, uh, yeah, the only reason why uh, we do it to begin with is just to tell you for the cases of, let me just say, go back. The re only reason why it is the, done is because you are able to understand and appreciate this statement first while thinking about that everything is coming from the identical distribution. Yeah, for example, the poison exp uh, experiment which I was doing or you are doing in your labs, the GM counter, right? That experiment has the error which is coming intrinsically, which is coming from the quantum mechanical nature of these decays and hence or the interaction of radiation. So there, I do not even need to worry about that these are coming from the different one. But as soon as you realize that this guy is helping, then the second question comes, what if the errors are not identically distributed, but they are still random? So that question is answered in that part of the second part of it. Please see the important point. When I am writing the mean, whether I write the mean as mu or and this as sigma over root n, or if I write this as n, 
summation over mu i over n and summation over sigma i square. So if I am writing it with the standard deviation over root n. Then in both the cases you are basically saying what that mean is there and the standard deviation is somehow there. It's the large number of observations which is making it to go towards the normal distribution. So that's what is happening. It's the large number of observations for each of these random experiments. And the intuitively how you can think about it since it's random. So sometimes you may be pressing your timepiece faster and sometimes you may be pressing it later on. I mean, uh, you understand it. What how we are getting this advantage because random means that it may be going on one direction in one of the experiment and it is going in other direction in other experiment. And if you take averages over several such uh, experiments, then you should be mostly canceling out and hence getting some mean effect out of it. And the mean of those random errors which you are having is basically zero in those cases. That's how you are getting this. Uh, I mean, intuitively, if you want to think about it, what is happening and how random uh, CLT is working. So first part of the experiment, I'm when I said identical, I did not need to, but the coin toss experiment or the experiment which we were doing with the GM counter, they all are having the experiments where we think of invoking a single distribution. And once you understand that it's a, in the single distribution, it works. The next question, of course, arises whether it works in the non single distributions as well. For example, in the cases where the errors are coming from multiple sources and this experiment works the, the way I told you, it is rather simple that all you have to think about your mean mu is nothing but summation mu i over n and your sigma over root n is nothing but uh, something like square root summation sigma i square over I guess it won't come out to be root n. So I should just clear. You get the point. Yes, it is, it is just for the reason of explanation. Nothing beyond that. Nothing beyond that. Yeah, so for me, I mean, uh, if you ask me the statement which I always use, I mean, which is for valid for all situations, uh, this situation, this statement is valid for all situations and identical when I am writing may or may not be identical and identical is one possible case of it. Identical is just one possible. Anything else? So now I hope you yes, understand sir. why you have been repeating. Yes, yeah, please go ahead. Sir, uh, counting statistics experiment upon increasing the preset time, our uh, distribution was modeled better by a Gaussian distribution rather than a Poisson distribution. So is that also central? No, 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 no. So, so uh, first of all, when you say that your distribution is better modeled as Gaussian distribution, that is what you think. Even though some of the teachers may also claim that, the only point is please understand from the statements which I have been giving uh, in my previous classes as n tends to infinity or large. Your Poisson or binomial distribution, they may be expressed by this Gaussian or normal distribution. It doesn't mean that Poisson distribution fails. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the binomial distribution fails. It just means that you can take advantage from the knowledge of the no Gaussian distribution. Why normal distribution is so? So first point, Poisson will still be valid. It is just that you can now use Poisson or Gaussian interchangeably. That's point one. Binomial will still remain valid. It is just that you, the result which you are getting can be described by Gaussian or binomial. The importance of the Gaussian is that it has the odd movements which go to zero. It is a symmetric. It is a bell shaped. So several features of the Gaussian distributions are very, very well understood. And hence you may be able to write now the same number of counts in a rather easily modeled way. I mean in a Gaussian modeled way. But Poisson is, is still a valid distribution. There is nothing which is prohibiting from Poisson being applied. Remember Poisson is a discrete distribution. One has to keep on thinking about so many discreteness. But in the counting statistics, you get the counts which are discrete, right? I mean, you are getting number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You're not getting count which is 1.3. You can convert it into that by doing the count rate. 
divided by number of uh, divided by time for example but otherwise you are getting the rate which is uh, so poisson is still valid you uh, but you can still describe by gaussian as well which you cannot do for a small uh, time interval yeah but uh, see for the sources for example the sources which are very strong you are getting maybe 10000 counts in uh, maybe 30 seconds even in those cases in 30 seconds you can apply it gaussian in case if you are getting only 100 counts then you may not be able to apply gaussian it so this is the only difference between the two so can you now uh, have i answered your question or Yes, you want sir. to ask something? Yeah. Okay. So poison is still valid, but you are now Gaussian can also describe the same distribution. Okay. Somebody else was uh, planning to ask. Uh, sir, I was saying that uh, the coin example uh, is how related with this uh, uh, central theorem. Oh, coin this uh, example is completely related with the uh, uh, theorem. Once you will give me these numbers. See, I gave you a one homework. This is a simple one. So what I am asking you to do is to give me the probability of heads. Yeah, so you will have to make a random variable such that it will give me probability of head in one toss. It will give me probability of head in 10 tosses. It will give me probability of head in 100 tosses. So maybe in 100 tosses, you will just have uh, some number divided by 100 and in one toss, it is some number divided by one. But once you give me this number, how how you are going to get it done is by using this mu and sigma. You will calculate just this mu and sigma. So keep on calculating mu and sigma for a binomial distribution for which n and p that's given to you. And then try to convert it into probability of head. And discuss with me these numbers which you have got. And then I will of course tell you. One thing is pretty certain. One thing is pretty certain, which I discussed in the previous page on the previous page without giving you any numbers. But you can think of you yourself told me, sir, if you are going to do this experiment 10,000 times, then the probability of head will go more and more towards 0 0.5 for a fair coin. Yeah, as compared to one toss. Right. Yes, sir. You yourself told me, sir, do this experiment more and more time. So why you were asking me to do this experiment more and more time? Because the probability and the statistics tells you that the whatever mean or the value you are getting, if you are going to look for the error in that value, this number is going down as sigma over root n. Larger the n, is smaller is this number. And hence, more precise is your answer. So... Again, let me just say the same sentence which I said earlier that if you take a single reading that will have x minus x plus minus sigma. In case if you repeat the experiment, you will get something like this. And this sigma x bar is sigma over root n if they are all identical and industry. I mean, uh, independent. Sorry. So you are going to gain advantage from this. You get the point that what are you gaining by doing this repetition of the uh, coin toss so many times? This is what you are gaining. You are going to get more precise value. In fact, there is something what we call as the law of large number, which I am not going to do because we decided to not do it love they are that is also one theorem and this theorem tells us that x bar goes to mu as n tends to infinity now what have i written what i am writing is that if there is a population which is described by a mean mu and you take one sample out of it, one sample out of it, then that one sample will describe this mean in some sense. But if you take many such samples, many such samples, and do the averaging over those samples, then that average is going to describe, or this average will tend towards the real population mean, 
in far better way so if you have large enough observations taken from this population then the average will tends towards mu if n is smaller then x bar may or may not be reflecting the real parameter of the population but okay i mean i am not going into it what i am saying is that this x bar oh sorry this x bar which i am writing also reflects your population parameter in a better way it is not that it is just getting more precise but also that your result is tending towards the population mean and this is clear i mean in somehow in some case if you take the full population value all populations so if somehow you can sample it and you take the average over that that of course it should give you mean right i mean if you can somehow take the full population all the samples and you take average over those values this will be actual mean right so okay so yes sir Uh, in case if you uh, did not understand i will not ask you that it is going to come in academics but yes you can uh, in your internal but please do keep on thinking about your central limit theorem wherever you have repeated that is why yesterday in the additional class i said that whether you studied it or not it is immaterial whenever you are asked to repeat the experiment and you were asked to take the averaging please go back take your notebooks i mean those practical lab books back why did you do that this was the first question which i asked why did you repeat the experiment what have you gained so can you now tell me what did you gain from that not uh, i mean uh, by going through this what i have told, taught you but what was actually asked during that time repeat the experiment and do what so to take the average so you had g1 plus minus let's say delta g1 first uh, experiment result and let's say you did it n times so what were you then asked to do you were asked to do the take average g1 plus g2 so gn over n which is what the g bar value will be and what were you doing with the error so this is only one part the part this part is basically coming from law of large number the g bar reflects the real g better than individual any one of this g1 g2 or gn what is this guy delta g1 what did you do with these delta g's can somebody tell me what did you do with these deltas error to aaya hoga aapka har ek bar reading mein wo to mandatory raha hoga likhna is it or is it not yes sir aaya tha और ये मैंडेटरी रहता है ये एरर लिखना आप लोगों को एक्सपेरिमेंटल uh, में yes, तो क्या किया उस उन एरर्स का जो वो हर रीडिंग में एरर्स आया उनका है अरे कोई भी आप आप में से कोई कुछ नहीं बोल रहे हैं you don't remember or uh, you don't uh, didn't do anything how did you code the result okay let me ask so you wrote the result g bar plus minus what yahan pe kya likha hua tha sir either log error or percentage error yeah but log error to aapne ek mein nikal liya delta g1 aa gaya usme har ek individual reading mein log error aaya aapke paas hai na us value ko use karte hue g1 ko use karte hue har ek individual reading mein aapke paas error aaya hoga wo to जब आपने एक बार एक्सपेरिमेंट पूरा कंप्लीट कर लिया सिंगल टाइम तो आपके पास जीवन भी आ गया था डेल्टा जीवन भी आ गया था एंड देन यू रिपीटेड द एक्सपेरिमेंट देन अगेन यू हैड जी टू एंड देन यू हैड डेल्टा जी टू इट इज पॉसिबल कि डेल्टा जी टू आपका सेम रहा हो डेल्टा जी वन इट्स क्वाइट पॉसिबल बट मेरा क्वेश्चन आपने किया क्या उस एरर का ये मैं जानना चाह रहा हूं तो नेक्स्ट टाइम नेक्स्ट क्लास में आप मुझे ये बताओगे कि आपने क्या किया था उस एरर का नोटबुक्स है आपके पास यस yes, सर so please go back and look into it what you did let me just tell you now that you have gone through your course in probability and statistics you have taken help of two major theorems of probability statistics one theorem which tells you that g bar which is the average value reflects the true value more precisely or more accurately as compared to any individual one so that is coming from the law of large number and we didn't even do that but i tell you 
the second thing which you have done is that delta g1 if you combine them since the errors were random then the error on this g bar which should be let's say i can write sigma g bar this error will be less than any of the errors in this individual ring and this sigma g bar will tell you that your result is not only more accurate but also more precise so more accuracy means g bar tends to the true value and more precision means that the spread around the values that is smaller so agar aap keval ek individual value dekhte uska spread dekhe aur agar aap average ka spread dekhe so average ka spread will be smaller this is what you are gaining in this experiment and this second part is coming directly from the clt okay now what to do with the normal distribution this is another important aspect that now think about an experiment jahan pe aapko ye to nahi pata ki random errors so uh, where these random errors are coming from but somehow you take large enough readings and then you will say sir i do not care what my individual distribution was i don't even know what my individual distribution was pdf but i can tell you that since i have repeated this experiment maybe 20 or 30 times so i know what kind of distribution this x bar will be having and this is nothing but the normal distribution so i mean look at the power you did not know anything about the pdf originally it could have been uniform it could have been exponential it could have been uh, poisson it could have been binomial but you do not even care you said sir i take sufficient large number of readings so i have a complete confidence that my x bar which i am building out of those many readings that is going to behave as normal what does that means what does that mean ki agar maine ye jo 30 readings ka ek bar average liya agar main isko bar 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 repeat karu aur 30 readings ka average leta chala jaau to whatever variable i am going to get which is called x bar this is going to have the distribution which we call as normal so look at this power i did not know i might not know the distribution of x1 x2 x3 but i know the distribution of x n x1 plus x2 plus x n divided by n you understand this that this is the second power which you are getting here we knew ki poisson distribution se aa raha tha aur isliye gaussian ban sakta hai but what we are claiming now with the central limit theorem is even bigger thing that even if we do not know even if we do not know which distribution is my x1 is following my x2 is following my x3 is following but if i can repeat my experiment and i build this x bar which is basically nothing but this this guy is going to follow normal distribution for sure so you do not know nothing about these pdfs of x1 x2 x3 xn but you know the pdf of x bar so you know the pdf of x bar to the extent that you know the mean which is of course now that we have uh, written this terms out to be summation of mu i over n or mu mu i itself depending on if they are all identical or not and you know your sigma square which is what we just wrote sigma square over n so you know your x bar is following this distribution which is this so x bar ka distribution kaise plot karenge mujhe koi agar ye bataya agar koi baat samajh paya hai so what i am doing is i am taking x bar as a random variable and i am going to plot p of x bar so that is the last thing which i wanted to discuss i give enough importance to this theorem that i continue to give a full class devoted for central limit theorem even though we did not do the proof but ek koi mujhe ye bataye ki x bar ka mujhe distribution plot karne ka kya matlab hua so i conducted one experiment maine usme 30 readings li and i did the average to wo to ek value aa gayi and then i do what wo to single value aayegi right अभी जब आप एक बार एक्सपेरिमेंट 30 टाइम्स करेंगे तो आपके पास एक्स बार की तो एक सिंगल वैल्यू आएगी राइट और नॉट सर वी हैव टू रिपीट एक्स बार एक्सपेरिमेंट अगेन एंड अगेन वेरी गुड दिस इज व्हाट यू हैव टू डू दैट यू आप बोलो दैट मींस दैट मींस वी हैव टू रिपीट लेट्स से वी आर परफॉर्मिंग 10 टाइम्स 
then we have to repeat the same experiment again and again so 10 times experiment which you have done for one time you keep on repeating this experiment of 10 times experiment and if you plot that you will find out that x bar is now changing it is not going to give you the same x bar every time it is going to change and the distribution which it is going to follow is what we call as the distribution of x bar x bar is a random variable which will get different value as you repeat on repeat on performing the experiment so once you did it 10 times you get one value again you do the experiment 10 times you get another value again you do the experiment you get another value such that you will finally get a distribution if you do it sufficient large number of time you will be able to see this distribution and that will have the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma over root n so when i am saying that x bar is a random variable and has a distribution it means that whatever you have done once for getting a value you can repeat it how do we do in real life we do something what we call as the monte carlo simulations about which i am not telling you right now but which is something that we can simulate the experiment many times on computer even before doing that experiment and even the coin toss experiment of course is some very uh, nice example of doing a monte carlo simulation where you can see that this probability of head which i am asking you as a question as a homework and there you will see that actually you can do this uh, whole on the computer itself rather than doing it by the way i will tell you something very interesting a mathematician who was jailed and he was in a jail this guy since being a mathematician he did not have anything else to do he was uh, serving life sentence so he is the one who holds a record of repeating this coin toss experiment of a fair coin so many times so that he could have said that i see that the probability of the head is turning out to be half so he repeated not for 100 100000 and he did repeat uh, kept on repeating it for so many years because that's what a mathematician does even in the even in in a jail so that's a very interesting thing i mean you can even look for that it's uh, quite interesting okay anything else uh, one question which was uh, left over sum sum uh, that tends to infinity yeah the sum sn uh, which i wrote as n mu of course and sigma square sn which came out to be what was the sigma square for sum so just add all of those this was sigma square each of these identical n sigma, n sigma square very good so please see that when i am summing over the random variable then of course that value whatever the value random variable is getting if i go towards n times it infinite times then it will become infinity but that is never the idea behind it the idea is always behind it in this that whether you take the average whether you have this n in the denominator or whether you do not have the n in the denominator both of these variables x bar and sn that follows the normal distribution yeah so even though the way you said it that if n becomes infinity sir this will become infinity but the variable which we build remember sn minus n mu over n sigma square this variable will tend towards standard normal for large n of random variables that's what the idea is fine i mean there uh, you can actually try to see it even uh, in the experiment which i gave you it is just that when you do the sum somehow you won't be able to compare your results so what i mean to say is this when you did the experiment for 2 minute and you got 100 if you do the experiment twice for 2 minute you get the value 200 right and how will you compare 200 with my first experiment which was uh, 100 counts in 2 minutes so you convert it into average and then you can of course compare that i am comparing the count rate in 2 minutes so x bar is more of a something which we are getting sn is like a side product that you i am not telling you that it is uh, you can compare but this variable will also this random variable will also tend toward normal 
विच वी गेट फ्रॉम दिस सेंट्रल लिमिट थियोरम you get the uh, get the point i mean it is not about that uh, it's the mathematic mathematical point that when xn bar tends to uh, normal the sum is actually tending to normal n in the denominator is nothing but a uh, constant so the distribution which it is is about this x1 to xn which is sum you divide it i mean that's a constant number basically a uh, fixed number which is n so that's it about it and you are right i mean in case if you go to infinity then you do not have any uh, i mean real meaning for sum sn because it will tend towards infinity so let me ask you this way how many heads you can get if i uh, repeat the coin toss for infinite times times what will be the sum so maybe in one toss you will get 10 in another 20 in another 30 but if you sum over all that will go to infinity because you have done it infinite but infinite here means a very large number infinity here cannot means in i mean theoretically infinity because you understand again that the same point which i am trying to uh, emphasize on you cannot repeat any real experiment infinite number of times there is nothing as infinite number of times that you are going to repeat an experiment the idea is to make a correspondence with your uh, let's say experimental work you cannot repeat any experiment infinite times you can only repeat it to a very 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 large number that is what is going to happen yep okay so uh, but that's a good point that what to do with sn you cannot do much about uh, about it it is just uh, additionally you are getting that the sum of the random variables also tend towards normal with of course the mean and the uh, variance which is given there and i should now stop it and in case if you have questions you will ask me later on but please try to do this homework this guy which i have written on this page so that i can see that you understand it and next time onwards next uh, so monday we will start with our statistics portion and two uh, classes mo mostly uh, uh, more likely on the statistics one fine and our syllabus ends at today's class for the internal assessment okay guys bye thank you sir 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 thank you